Just like Samuel L. Jackson got sick of snakes on a plane, the Stardust Crusaders had to deal with an extraordinarily large stag beetle on their plane in Part 3. The stand Tower of Grey is well known by other stand users as being the one to cause train accidents and plane crashes, whilst its user blends into the environment. Having used his stand for a long time prior to meeting Dio, Greyfly commits thefts and mass murders, leaving no sign that he was ever there. Welcome to my stand analysis series, where I delve deep into as much detail about the ins and outs of a stand as possible. My aim is to eventually do an analysis on every stand within the anime and manga series Jojo's Bizarre Adventure. I hope you will continue to follow me on this unique and educational journey. Flies are nothing but pests. Get one in your house and it'll keep coming back and getting in your face. However, if you don't subscribe to Bizarre Star Platinum right now, more and more flies will enter your house uninvited. I don't mean loads, just maybe four or five, just to annoy you every few minutes across your day. They won't even pay rent, it'll be a nightmare, so make sure you subscribe. The flies will get the message and stay away. I'm also on Twitter and post regular updates regarding uploads amongst other posts over there, so feel free to follow me at BStarPlatinum. Also, if you haven't read or watched part 3 yet, be aware this will include spoilers. You get the idea by now. Tower of Grey is a natural, non-humanoid stand which manifests as a large, dark-coloured stag beetle. Its entire form is around the size of an average human head and is purely seen flying around rather than crawling on the ground or walls. Tower of Grey has dark red eyes and features a black shell with blue patterns on the back. These patterns are on full display when the insect stand is in flight. Tower of Grey's mouth boasts very sharp teeth which are not normally present on a real-life stag beetle, and behind those teeth inside its mouth is a smaller, hidden-toothed jaw, which protrudes sharply out of the stand's mouth, similar to a xenomorph from the Alien movie series. This jaw also features a sharp needle, which is used to stab an enemy whilst executing its hidden jaw's sharp thrusts. This jaw extends to approximately one meter in front of the stand, opening the door for Tower of Grey to perform very quick, stealthy assassinations. Greyfly's stand, Tower of Grey, is named after the 16th tarot card in the major arcana, the Tower. This card represents upheaval and chaos, which relates to the constant chaos that Greyfly leaves in his wake when performing his thefts or murders. The stag beetle stand appears to have an aggressive and purely evil personality, whose only intent is to massacre entire vehicles worth of passengers, whether it be trains or planes. Tower of Grey takes the tongues of the passengers as trophies, and appears to live to do nothing other than murder, steal and cause catastrophic vehicular accidents, killing hundreds. Its user, Greyfly, takes his place in the vehicle, acting as an innocent bystander, and then he proceeds to use his stand from a distance to cause havoc on the transport vehicle. After all is said and done, he escapes unharmed and having fulfilled his murderous goals. The Tower of Grey arc was unfortunately very short, however it created a sense of uncertainty and mystery. A lot of the time in Jojo, enemy stand users reveal themselves early and proceed to engage with the protagonists in stand battles. However, in Tower of Grey's case, the user remained hidden until near the end of the arc. During this mystery, Greyfly used his stand as a vehicle to talk through, allowing him to remain hidden whilst also being able to convey his evil messages to the Crusaders. Everything the stand says is actually what the user is saying. We see this a lot in Jojo where the user speaks through the stand. As a stand itself, it does not have any noticeable personality of its own, following Greyfly's will completely. When it comes to the techniques portion of a stand analysis video, there is normally something openly showcased by the stand that makes it easy to know what to discuss, such as a very obvious special ability such as Star Platinum's Time Stop. However, with Tower of Grey, it doesn't really have any necessarily special techniques that actually stand out. It has its speed, which insects usually have when in flight anyway, except Tower of Grey's speed is enhanced a lot more than a regular stag beetle, Plus we have its hidden jaw, which is more a part of its anatomy rather than a technique it displays. So for argument's sake, we're gonna just mix its high speed and its hidden jaw into one and discuss both of those in this section. Plus, the way the stand attacks enemies definitely makes use of both of these abilities at the same time. So to be fair, it is probably better to discuss them together. The hidden jaw of Tower of Grey thrusts out of the stand's mouth and attaches to a target, which can then bite into the enemy's flesh. 
With how fast the jaw extends mixed with its sharp needle, it can easily pierce an enemy's body and bones to cause fast and swift fatal wounds, easily assassinating a target. This is enhanced even more in the situation that the assassination targets are not stand users and cannot see Tower of Grey, therefore receiving fatal wounds from some unseen means. The speed of an insect in flight is usually very fast in real life. However, Tower of Grey takes this high-speed flight to a whole new level. This speed allows Greyfly's stand to quickly and stealthily murder multiple people within a very short span of time. This is how Greyfly causes so many vehicular accidents, as the stand is able to quickly dispose of the drivers or pilots of the vehicles and then moving on to assassinate the rest of the crew and the passengers. Although, in a lot of cases, taking out the pilots or drivers would cause a crash anyway, probably killing the rest of the crew and passengers on its own. If Tower of Grey mixes its high speed with its hidden jaw ability, it then gains the power to bust straight through multiple human skulls in a row, stealing their tongues with intense accuracy in the process. On top of having super fast flight speed, Tower of Grey is also able to control its trajectory mid-flight with insane precision, being able to dodge nearly any incoming attack whilst also being able to place itself in the air at the precise location it wants to be in. The insane flight control as well as its high speed, plus its small stature in terms of a stand, all mixed together to create one of the more defensive stands in Stardust Crusaders. In an open area, Tower of Grey would probably be almost unstoppable. However, in the environment inside a plane with its tight walkways and seats lining the length of the plane, there is not really as much room for the stand to move around. However, it does make it easier for Tower of Grey to hide and use his stealth to assassinate a target rather easily. The speed of Tower of Grey allows for him to avoid attacks from even the fastest moving stands, even being able to dodge Star Platinum's palm strikes as well as Hierophant Green's Emerald Splash at super close range without being hit once. Greyfly also claims his stand could avoid multiple gunshots from point blank range being shot at him all at the same time, and he would not be hit by even one bullet. Of course, an object, unless wielded by a stand itself, cannot damage a stand. So if a human shot at a stand with a bullet, it would not actually damage the stand, it would just go through. Therefore, I think Greyfly just used this as an example of exactly how fast his stand can go. Whilst the power of the stand may be low and techniques may be limited, Tower of Grey's speed and control makes this stand an incredibly tough enemy to defeat. The stipulation is, as long as Tower of Grey can see the attack coming, it can easily dodge it. However, if something does sneak up on it and it doesn't know it's there, it will most likely be defeated. The only way he was able to be defeated was due to Hierophant Green using stealthy attacks rather than full frontal assaults to destroy it. Long range stands can still be used in full frontal assaults by the user, however Greyfly is smart, hiding his main body and causing catastrophes with his long range stand while staying completely anonymous is probably the most effective yet deceptive way of using this stand. Tower of Grey's small stature mixed with its speed and flight control make it an incredibly defensive stand, being able to avoid damage whilst also inflicting enemies with instant fatal wounds with almost no effort. Greyfly remains undetected during his massacres, but once the user has been discovered, it will be incredibly easy to take him out, considering he is a frail old man. If his stand has been disabled, this leaves Greyfly defenseless. Now for my final thoughts on Tower of Grey. This stand would probably have easily killed all of the Crusaders on the plane if they didn't have Hierophant Green that could hide its tentacles around the seats of the airplane. Obviously, if Star Platinum had time stop at this point, it could easily stop time and destroy the fly in mid-air. I do like the mysterious aspect of this arc, not knowing who or where the user is, and it really shows just how evil and dark some of Dio's minions can be, with Greyfly being full of killing intent. It seems he murders purely just for fun and to steal their belongings. I would also assume once a train or plane has crashed, Greyfly has already left the vehicle by using his stand. Because Tower of Grey is the manifestation of Greyfly's will, it does not share the properties of a real stag beetle. Therefore, Greyfly may possibly be able to grab the stand and fly out of the plane. Then again, since he is a frail old man, I highly doubt he could hold onto his stand for long enough to fly from a high altitude all the way down to ground level. Plus, the air gets colder the higher up you are. If he escapes from the plane and flies down using his stand, it's possible he would freeze before he got to the ground. So, I'm not 100% sure how he escapes the crash. There is another possibility where Greyfly could take out the pilots when he knew the plane would land on the ocean, potentially leaving him unharmed. 
although it is said that he causes plane crashes, killing hundreds every time, which indicates that the planes hit hard ground and are destroyed. Looking at what I've just written on this script, I realise that I'm probably going to extreme levels due to how crazy and weird Jojo's logic can be. But in a more realistic sense, the more simple answer is Greyfly probably just carried a parachute on board with him every time he planned to destroy a plane. I like the design of the stand itself being very unique in the sense of it being an insectoid stand. Even Avdol was surprised to find out an insectoid stand exists. The arc was also really interesting, but I wish it had been a little bit longer. Tower of Grey was a very good introduction to Dio's stand users that he sent after the Crusaders. With that statement, I'm not actually counting Kakuin, as he did end up joining the group. However, Greyfly was the first enemy to fight them and not join them afterwards, which, in my opinion, left his mark on the JoJo franchise forever. That about does it for Tower of Grey. This was another simple stand to explain and understand, but this series is about analysing every stand, meaning that some of these less interesting and more simple stands will also have videos made about them. This fight gave Kakuin his first big moment as a member of the Stardust Crusaders, solidifying to the viewers the extent of his stand's powerful but also stealthy abilities. After all, the most effective way to defeat a stealthy enemy is using a detection ability or being sneaky yourself, as power will most likely fall against a fast and technical opponent. So, just like how Tower of Grey was used as a vehicle to transmit Greyfly's intentions whilst keeping his main body safe, the stand was also used as a vehicle to showcase Kakuin's abilities, and to also express just how far Dio is willing to go to stop the Crusaders by hiring a crazed murderous killer. Before we get to my usual outro spiel, I wanted to put across this little… competition if you will. Well, not really a competition, but more of a poll, I guess. I want you guys to vote down in the comments below, of which stand you want me to cover next. Once one week has passed, I'll tally the votes and make a video on the stands that received the most requests. But there is one stipulation, and that is, please, no main villain stands. I want to spread out the main villain stand analysis videos across the entire series, and since Tower of Grey is only stand analysis video number 18, plus I've already covered two main villain stands, I want to have more of a break from them before moving on to the next main villain stand. As there are well over 100 stands, it's going to take quite a long time to get through them, so I do want to spread the main villain stands out across the series. Of course, if you vote for a main villain stand, I will take the comment on board and think about it for future. However, it will not count towards this particular poll. Please post down in the comments below which stand you want me to cover next, and after one week I'll announce the winner of the poll. But anyway, if you've enjoyed this video, then please consider subscribing to the channel for future JoJo content. Also, please hit the like button on this video if you want to see more stand analysis videos. To get notified when I release the next video, hit that bell and you'll be notified when I release another one. I appreciate you taking the time watching this video, but until next time, Bizarre Star Platinum, out.